The Fantastic Four are on their way, and they might introduce the MCU's next big bad. Annihilus could totally shake up the MCU's future, all thanks to Marvel's first family. Let's discuss. With Thanos now a pile of purple dust, probably sitting in an urn on Hawkeye's mantle, the MCU needs a new big bad. Because let's face it, it wouldn't be any fun if the Avengers didn't have villains to fight, right? What, would they just sit around like that opening scene in Age of Ultron telling old war stories and partying? But we all know that's not the case, and a new villain will soon rise up to challenge the Avengers for Earth's very soul. But who's it gonna be? Well, if we look at the future plans for the MCU, one evil name stands above the rest, Annihilus. If you don't know Annihilus, trust me, you will soon enough. This villain is one seriously twisted foe and would be more than enough of a threat for the entire Avengers team going forward. And he's definitely the type of bad guy who you can build up to over time. Even if his introduction doesn't come until Phase 5, I think the wait is worth it. You see, Annihilus is first and foremost a Fantastic Four villain. And in case we just missed Marvel's first family standing next to Howard the Duck in the climactic Avengers Endgame battle, then it's safe to say they haven't shown up yet. But we know it's only a matter of time, and their first movie, if done right, could pull off something amazing. If the Fantastic Four are introduced in a Phase 5 movie, they could not only pivot the MCU to focus on them as major players going forward, but they could also tease Annihilus as the franchise's next big bad. That's not an easy feat by any means, but I have faith that Marvel can succeed where Fox failed with the Fantastic Four. So yeah, basically Annihilus will act as much the same way Thanos did, with the villain being hinted at throughout the franchise, only to lead to a bigger showdown in the future. And with his introduction, you can bring an amazing new concept into the MCU, and that would of course be the Negative Zone. Alright, that kinda sounds like a scary name, but really, the Negative Zone is just an antimatter universe meaning everything is made from antimatter, and in order to travel there, you need to reverse your polarity on a molecular level. Or else something bad will happen to you. What exactly? Well, let's just say I'd rather be in charge of washing Hulk's underwear than dealing with the negative zone, and that should really tell you something. Annihilus calls the negative zone his home, so if you get an invitation to a housewarming party from Annihilus, you best shred it immediately. And the villain has a lot of different motivations over the years, but it usually comes down to invading our universe and completely taking over everything. You know, classic bad guy stuff. So what would that look like in the MCU? Well, it would be tremendously easy to have Mr. Fantastic be the one to discover the Negative Zone, as he's the one to do it in the comics. In the Ultimate Marvel comics, the Negative Zone is even tied directly to the Fantastic Four getting their powers. So you already have a great story set up right there. Much like the Quantum Realm in the Ant-Man series being vitally important to the MCU in the long run, the Negative Zone could be the next weird science thing that has long-lasting implications for the MCU. Sorry Scott, we're on to bigger and better things. I'm not sure yet how exactly the Negative Zone will be introduced, but it would be incredibly easy to do something like tease the Negative Zone's existence in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness before having Mr. Fantastic be the one to discover it outright in a future standalone movie. Overall though, the facts remain the same. Mr. Fantastic can discover the Negative Zone in the MCU, positioning him into the new smartest guy in the room position, but that could also open up the door to tease Annihilus to become the next big threat the Avengers face together. But if you look at Thanos in his early appearances, we knew what was driving the Mad Titan. The guy wanted to court death as he gathered all the Infinity Stones to set forth his evil plan. If Annihilus is going to be the next big bad of the MCU, what will his motivation be? The most likely scenario will be that the Fantastic Four will do something in a Phase 5 film to cause Annihilus' wrath and lead the villain to attacking our universe in Phase 6. If the MCU wants to introduce another incredibly powerful mystical item to act like a MacGuffin, much in the same way the Infinity Stones drove the plot of the early MCU phases, then maybe Annihilus' motivation could come from the Fantastic Four stealing his cosmic control rod. You see, in the comics, the device is Annihilus' main weapon that has kept him alive for ages. It allows the holder to manipulate matter and energy while also slowing down the aging process. Because at his core, Annihilus doesn't want to grow old and pass away. And when he first meets the Fantastic Four in the comics, the group steals the cosmic control rod to help Sue Richards during her pregnancy. They return the item after they were done, but it was too late. They made an enemy with Annihilus, which would cause irrevocable damage down the line. Maybe in the first Fantastic Four movie, the group steal the cosmic control rod, but then not return it, knowing how dangerous something like that is and decided to keep it for future study. 
Of course, it means Annihilus could come hunting for his prized possession. And maybe that's what can separate Thanos and Annihilus as big bads. For Thanos, the audience knew he existed and was hunting Infinity Stones long before the Avengers did. But this time, the heroes could know right off the bat that the new weapon they have is incredibly dangerous and cannot go back to Annihilus, leading to our heroes prepping for his big bad attack over the course of Phase 5 and Phase 6. But that's not the only way the Fantastic Four could kick off Annihilus. I mentioned the Quantum Realm earlier, and maybe that could somehow affect the Negative Zone's discovery. I've always liked the idea of every time heroes do something to stop a big bad, they inadvertently cause the next big threat, therefore creating this endless cycle of good versus evil. So what if the exploitation of the Quantum Realm in Avengers Endgame leads to Annihilus coming into power? Because now the world knows time travel exists, and someone is going to want to exploit that. Maybe a re-established shield hires Reed Richards to further study the Quantum Realm, now that it's available to mostly anyone, and in doing so leads the scientists to discover the Negative Zone. And maybe there's a side effect where all the time travel and quantum realming – yes, I just made that a verb – was somehow making Annihilus grow stronger. Or maybe it's something related to Doctor Strange. Maybe right now the Fantastic Four exist in a parallel universe that will be discovered in Doctor Strange's sequel. And when the always curious Fantastic Four cross over to our universe, they accidentally allow Annihilus to cross over as well from his antimatter universe. This could lead to an interesting conflict that relates to not just our Earth being in danger, but every Earth across all dimensions. If the MCU really wants to top themselves after Endgame, then exploring the multiverse would probably be the best way forward. Obviously, this is all just spitballing, but the main point here is that there are a lot of different ways to introduce Annihilus into the MCU to be the next big bad guy, while also having it tied directly into the Fantastic Four. These heroes and that villain should be linked together, and you shouldn't have one without the other. And hey, if both are brought to the MCU, I certainly wouldn't complain. So with Annihilus established as a major threat in the MCU, what would that look like from a long-term storytelling perspective? How would the MCU successfully lead up to a climactic battle with Annihilus in a future Avengers movie? Much like the MCU loosely adapted the Infinity Gauntlet and the Infinity War comic storylines, the Annihilus battle could be based on the infamous Annihilation comic arc. Of course, like any comic adaptation, there would be certain changes and deviations from the source material. But at its core, the main focus of that comic arc could remain the same. Annihilus leads an invasion army from the Negative Zone into the Positive Matter universe, and an all-out war takes place. It's very space-heavy comic story, which actually could be interesting. Instead of another huge battle on Earth, maybe it's for the best if the next gigantic Avengers battle takes place in the cosmos. Imagine this incredibly epic space fight that could rival that other big space franchise owned by Disney. I think that could be a lot of fun. But the great thing about the Annihilation storyline is that it takes place over a long period of time. In Avengers Infinity War, Thanos just showed up and conquered everything. But Avengers Annihilation? Come on, that would be a perfect title, wouldn't it? Could show a full-out war between Annihilus' forces and our heroes over the course of several movies. It wouldn't just be one big fight, but an actual strategic war plan where Earth has to fully team up with other alien planets to unite against Annihilus and his evil armada. And with Iron Man and Captain America out of the picture, who would step up to represent Earth in this coming war? Well, because it's Annihilus and because in this version he's dealt with this hero before, that would have to be Reed Richards. How awesome would it be to see Mr. Fantastic and the rest of the Fantastic Four step up to be at the forefront of this epic battle? It would make sense from a storytelling perspective, because it seems like the MCU is wanting to separate their Earth and cosmic side going forward, and the Fantastic Four are actually heroes that could fit in both sides of that. So who would be cast in these important roles? Well, obviously there are two names for the Fantastic Four that are far and above the rest in terms of fan casting. John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are the two most common names to be thrown out there by fans to play Mr. Fantastic and Mrs. Fantastic, and I completely agree. They would be perfect for it. It's not like Krasinski is opposed to the idea. He's asked constantly if he'd like to play the character, if offered, and his responses are generally always enthusiastic at the possibility. So even if him and his real-life beauty of a wife, Emily Blunt, would perhaps make too much sense for the roles, Marvel needs to make this happen ASAP. Annihilus could be out there, just waiting for his chance to invade our universe, so it would be extremely reassuring if we had heroes that looked like John Krasinski and Emily Blunt protecting us. Overall, there has to be some changes to the Annihilation storyline in order to fit into the MCU, but I really believe this could be the perfect story to tell in this franchise. 
A nihilist could be a terrifying villain, and focusing on him could push the MCU to an even greater height. And if making him the next big bad results in the Fantastic Four becoming the new main faces of the MCU, well, that's just a happy side effect. I hope Annihilus is the next big bad of the MCU. He's an awesome villain. What do you think? How could you see an Annihilation storyline work out on the big screen? Let us know in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome MCU content. Thanks for watching CBR.